Hey, what's up everyone? Fuller here. Uh, welcome back to the channel. Thanks so much for checking out these videos and for all your comments and likes. It's super helpful. Uh, I'm glad you're enjoying these things. Today, we're going to continue our court series. This is part two of our court series. And I want to do something a little different because, uh, you know, a lot of times when we use courts, we think about audio. But the truth is you can do a lot of really cool stuff related to audio with the courts. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how to basically create explosions, spawn emitters at different locations using the quartz clock so we can quantize those explosions to this awesome swag rock track. And it really gets your adrenaline flowing. And it looks a little bit like this. So there it is, that's what we're gonna to create today. I'm gonna to kinda of show you how I did it and then you can run with that, do whatever you want. This isn't the only way to do it, but this is, I think, a good way to do it. Um, and I think when you can quantize action to music in a game, it's super impactful. Um, and so that's what we're gonna do. So let's jump into the blueprint and look at what we did. So here's our level. When we play this level, it spawns the track. And um, basically what I did is I just created these six spheres, basically, um, and all you gotta do to do that is just drag in your shapes, your spheres, you can color them, change the location, all that stuff. You, I did add physics to them and weight so that they're moving and there's a little bit more action to it. You could do whatever you want, use whatever your shapes, but kind of I just envision kind of like a running man kind of thing where you're running through these things and they're exploding. Um, so let's go over to the blueprint. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time on setting up the quartz clock. If you want to learn how to do that, please watch part one of this series. We did all that, and I don't want to waste time in this one. But basically, I set up a quartz clock uh, as per the instructions in our first video. And then what I did is um, once I created the variable, I pulled in, uh, I created the the, so the sound for this track. It's just a little. It's a little swag rock cue that I wrote for some TV shows. And um, I brought this in and then I play this quantize and then I start the clock. And then once the clock starts, uh, it's gonna play quantized again. You can learn how to do all of this in the previous video. Now here's where, oh, here's the part we're gonna focus on today. After we create this clock, we, um, I can't talk today. After we create this clock, we subscribe to the quantization event on the bar and we're gonna delegate this. So this is now going to basically trigger this event every time we have a bar event. And that's what we want because we wanna trigger these explosions and emitters based on the music. And it'll be in sync because the track is also playing to the same quartz clock at the tempo, which I think is 92, yeah. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we gotta do two things. One, we gotta get the location of the sphere because that's where we want the emitter to happen. And then we've got to program that emitter to happen. And then also we'll throw an explosion sound on it just so it's like total, you know, Michael Bay. Uh, so we're going to go over here. Let's get our first sphere. We're going to uh, click on that. Then we're going to go back to our map and we're going to right click create a reference to sphere. So now in this blueprint, I have a reference to that sphere. And we're going to drag off here and we're going to get location, get actor location. So now we have the reference to the sphere and we know where it is. And that's gonna become come in real handy. Now I do wanna show you one thing. I wanna come off here and I wanna do a print string. And then I wanna drag number bar to that. And I just wanna show you what happens when we do this. In the corner you'll see our bars are counting. So that's a visual representation of what's happening with the quartz clock. And so we're just gonna leave that there. So now what I wanna do is I want my first explosion to hit right on that, uh, that downbeat. And if you notice, the track starts one measure and a drum fill pickup note, and then measure two is actually the downbeat. So you got the drum fill, two. So we want that first explosion to hit on two. So how do we tell Unreal to do that? Well, pretty easy actually. We're gonna come out of the number of bars and we're going to do it equal and so what this is going to do is this is going to tell unreal when this bar count equals two i want to do something um, and so what i got to do is i got to drag off this boolean and i'm going to add a branch and so what the branch does is it basically says hey when this is true when this bar is two after the clock has started keep track of the bars after it's bar two i want you to do this thing 
Now we got to trigger this branch node and we'll trigger this off the bar. Again, every beat, every bar of this uh, clock is going to trigger this event. So we're going to trigger it. We're going to check to see if it's bar two. If it is, we're going to come out here. And then if it's not, it's going to go out here, but we don't need it to do anything if it's not. So we'll just leave that blank. So we're going to come out here and when it's true, we're going to spawn emitter at location and we're going to spawn the explosion and we're going to spawn it at the location of the first sphere. So that's it. Now let's also come out here and let's play 2D sound and we're going to select explosion 2, which is this. Perfect. So now what's going to happen is when the clock starts counting and it gets to 2, it's going to trigger this emitter at the location of the first sphere and it's going to play the sound. So fingers crossed, let's see if this works. Keep an eye out for the sphere. Bam! Perfect. It's exciting. It's like a 70s action movie. Now, let's make that explosion bigger too, because it's cool. You can just go in there and you can Michael Bay it all out. Total Transformers here. And let's just blow everything up. Here we go. Bigger explosion. Nice. Now we're talking. And so basically, um, all we have to do now is just do that for each sphere. And I'm not going to walk through that. That's just obsessive waste of time. You basically do the same thing. But I do want you do need to do one thing. So you can only pull one pin out of here. So what we got to do is we need to bring this out and we need to do a sequence. And what the sequence will do is it allow us to send out multiple pins when this triggers. Now it's not exactly the same time, but it's so close that you, you can't tell. And you can put as many pins here as you want. So uh, what you can do is you can just go over here. You can copy this whole logic, paste it, bring it down here and then drag this to here and now you've created another explosion. The only thing you need to change is the location. So let's get rid of the sphere one. Let's click on sphere two and then again right click on here create a reference to sphere two. Now we drag this to the location and that's going to explode it at the next location and let's make it a little bigger. And everything else should work the same. Let's see what happens. Here's explosion one, and then here's explosion two right here. Oh, you know what I didn't do? I didn't change the beat. We want this to happen on beat three, and we also need to drag this out and connect it. I'm glad that happened, because that would be wrong of me. You wouldn't be able to figure that out. So there we go. Make sure you drag that. So now when it gets to beat three, the second explosion is going to happen. Bam. Now it's going to come over here. Bam. Okay. And there's nothing here because we haven't programmed yet. So anyways, um, that's pretty much it. Uh, you can do this for all of the spheres. Uh, you can add as many as you want. Um, and then that's pretty much it. That's the beauty of the quartz system. The other thing you can do is you can reset the transport if you want uh, by dragging off a node as well. And I showed you how to do that in the last video, so I'm not going to show you in this video. Um, but anyways, so you can see right away how the court system is really making music and action kind of together in one thing. And it just makes the game so much better and more like, uh, emotional and, and just everything about it is just more visceral. Um, so it's a really cool technique, probably un underused. Um, I think I wish more video games you know, kind of did more stuff with music, but you know, who knows? Um, so anyways, I hope this video was helpful and, um, thanks for checking it out. Make sure you like and subscribe to the video that helps the algorithm that's get, gets my videos out there and it just makes me want to make more videos. So anyways, have an awesome day and we'll see you in the next video.